In this video, I'm going to show you five easy drag and drop transitions that you can create for your videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. What's going on? My name is Peter Sorellis. I'm a videographer and editor from Toronto, Canada. I specialize in sport videography. And the first transition that we're going to make here is a shake. And you can make these shakes super customizable inside of Premiere Pro. And I actually just dropped a presets pack with a ton of transitions in it called the Transitions Playbook with over 100 custom built transitions by me with different effects of different lengths and intensities, including a bunch of different camera shakes that are completely customizable. So I'm going to show you how to create one here. And if you want a whole bunch that have already been customized with different other effects added and different intensities and lengths and all that stuff that I talked about, then you can go check that out. The link is gonna be in the description. So let's start here by dragging on our adjustment layer like we have here. You wanna make sure that this adjustment layer is dead center between the cuts of this footage here that we're working with. And we're just gonna use this footage as a sample for all the transitions that we make. So let's say we have, that's five frames. Let's cut it there and get rid of the end. And we, I think I only want this adjustment layer to be eight frames. So we'll make that one frame less. That's one, two, three, four to the middle. Add a marker by clicking M where your cut is. And then let's go one, two, three, four frames. Command K to cut delete the adjustment layer. And now we're gonna grab the transform effect, which is a really useful and versatile effect. And we're gonna keyframe the position and the scale properties. So let's actually move these keyframes to the first frame of our adjustment layer here. Uncheck use composition shutter angle and drag this to be nice and high. So we get a lot of blur as we make this transition. And now we're going to just scale this up a little bit and give it a little bit of movement. Go to the next one scale it up, move it a little, go to the next one, scale it down a little, maybe a little more, give it some more movement. You get it. You repeat this process a bunch of times. Keep scaling and moving. The greater the difference between the scale and the movement of every shot, the more drastic your shake effect is going to be. So you can choose if you want to do a light shake by not scaling up very much and not moving the frame very much, or if you want to do a heavy shake by scaling up and moving the frame a lot more. And that's completely up to you. Pretty tedious effect to build out, which is why I presetted a whole bunch of these. So I wouldn't have to do this again outside of this tutorial. And hopefully you don't either. But if you do that, then you get a pretty simple looking shake like this. You can see that one, the scale is more impacted than the position is but I have this other shake here that I've taken some more time to build. So let's turn off this one and use this shake that I've built out more properly. And it has more side to side motion and it wasn't as rushed as the one I just showed you, but that's the principle. And you can create your own shakes by playing with it just like that and get it to be as drastic or as minimal as you need. The next effect that we're gonna build is a swipe. So let's grab our adjustment layer again and figure out how many frames we wanna make this. I think we just leave it as is and do eight frames so four that's five one two three for eight and cut there and this is our eight frame adjustment layer again five six seven eight as you can see and to create a swipe we actually need to do two different effects here so let's start by grabbing the offset effect this is a pretty useful effect for a whole bunch of different transitions you can, allows you to move your frame around like this and it just kind of endlessly lets you swipe through in different ways and all this different type of stuff so we're going to keyframe this shift center two property, and then let's go to the middle. So one, two, three, four frames. And then we're going to go another one, two, three, four frames to get to the end. Pull this adjustment layer out one, just so we can actually keyframe right here. And then we're going to pull in the direction that we want to swipe so that we get two full revolutions. So there's one revolution. There's two revolutions right there. And then we'll select these, right click, ease in, do the same thing, ease out. And now we're going to keyframe blend with original. Leave that at zero. Go back to your previous keyframe on shift center two at the very first frame of our adjustment layer. Command V after copying this to paste or add another keyframe at 0%. Now go to where our marker is in the middle. We're going to change blend with original to 50%. And you'll see when we swipe, this gives us this kind of ghosting effect where part of the original video is still visible even as we swipe through. And then again, we'll highlight these and we're gonna ease in and ease out. Bring this adjustment layer frame back one 
as we had and then play this through. Now you can see this kind of sells the swipe effect, but it's not fully there yet. So let's grab a directional blur, change your direction to be 90 degrees, which is side by side. If you do it at zero degrees or 180 degrees, it'll be an up and down blur, which is not what we want. And let's change our blur length in the middle to be where we want it to be. I think we actually just want this to be at 100 and add a keyframe and then we'll go to the start and set this to zero, copy this keyframe, go to the end. Again, we have to extend this one frame and set to zero. Again, highlight these, right click, ease in, ease out. And you can even come into here and toggle these properties to control the animation of all your keyframes. I've taken more time to control the animation of all these keyframes to make everything as smooth as possible in the transitions playbook on my website, but I'm not gonna do too much of that here since this is just for demonstration purposes. We'll just pretend that that's good. And then you get this swipe effect just like this. The next effect we're gonna work on is a pulse and this is a pretty easy transition. So let's grab our adjustment layer again. And this time let's only do one, two, three frames on that side and then one, two, three frames on this side for a six frame adjustment layer. And now we're gonna grab the transform effect. So drag that on. And then we're going to keyframe our scale on the first slide to be 110, let's say, maybe even 115. And then our next frame, we're gonna keep the scale at 100. And now just highlight these, Command C, Command V, highlight them again, go forward two, Command C, Command V, and then right at the end, set the scale to 115, bring this adjustment layer back so that we're back at one, two, three, four, five, six frames, and you get this fun effect. You can make this pulse as large or as small as you want, and you can combine it with other effects to make it more interesting, but it's a fun little way to get a more interesting transition than just a hard cut if you're filming some high intensity action with fast movement or anything that you just want to add a little bit of extra energy to. Now let's get into our last transition. We'll grab the adjustment layer again, bring it down to size. So let's do 10 frames for this one. So we got five frames right there and then five to go back and five to the end and cut that. And now we're going to grab the VR digital glitch effect. I talked about this effect in a video I did recently also focusing on transitions where I went over some effects in Premiere Pro that are very underused for creating really cool transitions. If you like the sound of that, you can check that out up here. But we're gonna talk about it a little bit today. If you want more details, go check out that video. So let's just turn down this distortion. Now all we have is our color distortion here. And we're just going to set our color distortion with all these properties where we want. We can move it to the left or to the right or set it however we feel. And then we're going to keyframe our master amplitude, put a keyframe in the middle at 100, and then come to our first frame here, set it to zero, and then come to our last frame, extend the adjustment layer by one so we can actually add the keyframe, and set it to zero. Again, I highly suggest you get in here and animate these properties. Kind of a light glitch, but you can customize it in a lot of ways. So if I want to make this heavier, I can go to the distortion and just turn it up. And now if I want to add some of that pixelation type of thing that we had, I can turn that back up as well. Just a little bit of pixelation like this. You can see how it all builds up and comes down at once because I've keyframed the master amplitude. And you can even like combine this VR digital glitch effect with flashes and shakes and other things to create more complex transitions. And that's actually the fifth transition that I have for you. So here's a new clip we have with no transitions, but say I option and drag our VR digital glitch effect over and then I'll go back and I'll option drag our swipe over. And let's set these to be the same amount of frames. And now when you swipe, you get this sh like swiping effect and you get this glitch effect. So you can see the difference with and without the glitch. And if you want to turn that glitch up to make it more pronounced, you can. The RGB glitch kind of helps to sell it a little bit more, makes it look a little bit more, I guess, intense and fast moving. We can also do this by say we get rid of our swipe there. Let's grab our shake that we created. Set these to be the same length, just like this. And there you go. All of a sudden you have a shake 
and you have an RGB effect at the same time, and it really helps to sell it. This is a pretty intense looking effect if you want to transition from one fast moving scene to another pretty quickly. But I've already gone through and created all these effects with different frame lengths and some of them already combined into various effects that I think work well together to give you more intense transitions in the transitions playbook, which again is on my website, www.petersorellis.com. I've been shamelessly plugging that this whole video, but I do hope you actually learned something from making these transitions and can go make them yourself. And I encourage you to go and customize things and experiment and make transitions the way you want and customize them to your liking and the way you make your videos. But if this video did help you, then please subscribe to the channel because I post videography and video editing tips and tutorial videos similar to this on a regular basis. And I would love to have you around for that. Let me know what videos you want to see from me. I love making these editing tutorials and I do a lot of like behind the scenes stuff in the field covering my work as a sports videographer as well. But if you have something specific that you'd like to see me teach or get out and show you or you, I don't know, maybe just want to hang out and see like what a day in my life looks like or whatever. I'm down for it all. So talk to me in the comments. I'm here for it. Anyway, that's going to be all for this one. So until next time, peace.